Shalom. If you want proof that there is more to religious living than just the Ten Commandments, look no further than the Torah portion that immediately follows it. This week's Torah portion, Parshat Mishpatim, follows the events of Mount Sinai and its overwhelming in scope, law after law concerning our moral, ethical, and spiritual obligations. A lot more than just Ten Commandments. In fact, I had a hard time choosing just one to discuss with you for this video. What I love about this week's section from Exodus is that we see that our sacred text, the Torah, is moving away from what has been a narrative to becoming a true law book. And more importantly for me, connecting religious life to ethical behavior. Nothing shows that more than Exodus chapter 22, verses 20 through 23. We read there, And you shall not wrong a stranger, neither shall you oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall also not mistreat any widow or orphan. If you mistreat them, if they cry out to me, I will surely listen to their outcry. And my anger will blaze forth, and I will put you to the sword. And your own wives shall become widows, and your children orphans. That's powerful stuff. But wait, what is it with the double if that was in, I think it was verse 22? If you mistreat them, and if they cry out to me, I will surely listen to their outcry. Is God saying that his anger will blaze forth only if the mistreated widow and orphan cry out for help? What, if you mistreat them and if they cry out only? As long as they don't cry out, I'll look the other way, you'll get a pass? That can't be what the text is saying. And I don't think it is. I think the Hebrew is actually written to emphasize the gravity of this sin. I think a better way to translate that verse is imaneta ane oto. If you mistreat them in any way, ki im sa causing them to cry out to me, shamoa eshma tzakato, I will surely hear their cry. In other words, if you afflict them in any way, so that all they can do is cry out to me. Trust me, I will listen to them, and woe unto you. Now think about what the text then is teaching. In good societies, there are always laws set up to protect the stranger, the poor, the widow, the orphan. Ethical and moral societies often create safety nets, safety nets for the most vulnerable. But God is saying that's not enough. If people are still hurting, your responsibilities and obligations do not end. We don't often want to admit that. We see people struggling. We hear their cries for help. We tell ourselves we've done enough already. We can't do anything more. And if the stranger, the widow, the orphan are left with no one to hear their plea, tough luck, we've done our part. No, you haven't, says God. If you afflict them in any way, in any way, even turning your back, causing them to cry out to me out of desperation, God says, I will hear their cry. And woe unto you who have become deaf. I'm not into a vengeful God, so I don't want to or like to take the text literally but I do want to take it seriously. Because what is the text teaching us? That when we want to stand pat and say we've done enough, God says, don't you ever say that when it comes to the needs of the poor, the widow, the stranger, the orphan. Don't you dare, don't you dare afflict the vulnerable in any way. I created you with ears to hear the cries of the poor. If their cries have to go up to me, I will hear them, and you will hear from me. 
I love a God that speaks to us through the fiery emotion of compassion for the poor. I can't, I can't find strength in a God seen in human form, but I can feel inspired by a God with real human emotions. A God who feels the anguish of the vulnerable in this world. And yes, a God who gets angry not for idolatry, but when no one, not a single person created his image, is willing to step up for those in need. I find it incredibly moving to notice that the sentence right before all this is another command, the command not to worship false gods through sacrifices. As if to teach, if you find the previous commandment so important, then just remember what really animates this God that you want to offer sacrifices and that you love. What animates God is how we act to those who need God the most. You want God to hear your prayers? You hear the cries of those who are needy, those who are poor, the stranger, the orphan, and the widow. Shabbat Shalom.